morning, y'all. The winter is upon us. It is cold as fuck out here. But in some weird sadistic way, I do enjoy it because it feels like hardcore. And I feel like I gotta be like, even though I think for people that live in like a real state, like fucking Maine or some shit, they're like, what? That's just 50 degrees. Shut the fuck up. Oh, I leaked how many degrees it was. It's actually 20 degrees. It's just coming from California, my fucking pussy ass. I'm like, God damn, it's cold. In the morning, honestly, no bullshit. Like, you know, like that, the hour or two, like right before your alarm, right before the sun comes out. Like, it's like that merit. You're just marinating. It's cozy. You're like the most relaxed you've ever been because you just slept at least a good like six, seven hours and you're hoping to push it till like eight or nine. My alarm goes off and I'm like, oh. And then I, I look outside and I know how cold it's going to be. It is a little bit like of a, of a fight. <laughs> what I usually just do though, I just go, don't think. And I just put my feet on the ground. That's like the key I really think so. If you put your feet on the ground, then you're already like halfway up. But if you're thinking in bed, and like, oh, what should I do, what should I do? Mm, do I really need to, mm, what do you think? And, it, it, and if you get warmer and warmer and warmer, you're fucked. But if you're like, ah, fuck it, don't think, and you throw your blankets off and you put your feet on the ground, you're like, ah, right, I'm up then. That's even what I do when I go hot tub at night. Like on uh, two days a week, I hot tub to help like with recovery. And I've been watching, um, Andrew Huberman, and there's like a ton of benefits of jumping in hot and cold. So, like the water's like 40 something degrees. It's really, really cold. And it's more than a cold plunge. Cause you know, when you're cold plunging, you're up to here. I jump in the cold water, like submerge, and I try to count, you know? So it's like even colder than what cold plunge is. And I know it's cold, so usually I go, don't think when I'm still in the hot water. I'm like, don't think, and I come out and I jump in and immediately I hit the water, I'm like, go fuck. But then when I come back in, you're, you're like, okay, that was worth it. Got deadlifts today. Today's my secondary deadlift day. So it's not as heavy, but it's the time I can work on form. So that's something I really, really, really need to work on if I'm really trying to push powerlifting next year. One, I need to start practicing with the stiff bar. Two, once the weights get really heavy, that yanking isn't gonna cut it. So I really gotta make sure, I pull the slack out and do everything correct if I'm trying to maximize strength. You know, I warm up with a different mentality now. Not a different mentality, but I measure my warm up differently. So I used to do like five minutes on the assault bike or like five minutes on the treadmill and I would get off. And then I started to realize, like I try to be as aware as an athlete as possible. And I started to realize like, damn, sometimes the warm ups for five minutes feel really good. I feel really warm. I'm like ready to like give me a ball and I'll dunk on a seven foot court. And then there's times where I'm like, the fuck? Why do I still feel like not lubricated? And I'm like, you know what? Because the intensity is different. So now, instead of going based off time, I actually go based off calories, like how we do our workouts. Now I go, okay, you know what? After 25 calories, that's how much my body has actually moved in output. And uh, I do my warm ups based off the amount of calories now. So if it takes 10 minutes to do 25 calories, then my body's lubed up, or if it takes like three minutes, then my body's lubed up. But I try not to be too intense because it is a warm up. but now I, I measure it based off the output. So Andrew Huberman always talks about getting that low angle morning light because it really sets your circadian rhythm. So I'm staring directly into the sun and get that low angle light that Andrew Huberman said so. Ah, oh, I'm blind! I can't see! Fucking Andrew! So this is how I record stuff for Instagram. I do it for real, and then I pretend like it never happened. 
And now it's time for my warm up. Stories are only like 10 seconds. <laughs> Paused conventional for six, ten. Okay. Pause conventional. All right. All right, sir. Oh damn, now this is a, that's a fucking IPF bar, all right, just tight. Deadlifts are so hard. So used to wanting to rip it, forget to pause in the middle. So right now, I'm thinking, when I set up, first thing I do is long arms. So almost as if I'm like pushing down, because you want to lengthen your arms so you have the least range of motion possible, you know, the most efficient pull. So long arms go straight down, and I grab the bar. Once I hold onto the bar, I push the slack out of the bar, Son of a bitch. I push the slack out of the bar with my legs. And then, um, and then I get my hips in a position where it's not too low so I don't end up squatting the deadlift and it's not too high where I'm stiff legging. So I push the slack out of the bar and then accelerate. So I go, like before it would just be like zero to hundred, but now it's like zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And so I should be accelerating really hard from this point on, but I want to be careful so I don't miss groove out of the hole. That's what I, those are, those are my cues now. Cause I think the modern way of deadlifting, whereas before you just fuck it, brother. Whoosh. These days, everyone, not only are people strong, people are technicians. So like some of the best conventional pullers are actually sumo pullers because they practice so technically on their sumo that they apply it. And I think that's the reason why a lot of conventional guys been getting their ass whooped. Because when you see someone like Jamal pull conventional, same way, it's fucking clean. So I'm trying to clean up my technique too. Still experimenting, trying to find different ways to like pull the slack out. Cause my goal is to get my point, to get my hips to a point where it's at its strongest position. So you actually don't want to have this kind of deadlift cause you're wasting energy. So you want to have your leverage, like know where your high hip point is, where the minute your hips move, the bar is moving at the same time. And I usually know that when I'm yanking. So it goes pow. But I also want to be efficient and technical. So now 
I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do I pull the slack out and then lock, and then end up exactly where my hips are strong. So that's kind of like the timing and the synchronization I'm trying to figure out. I think I'm ready for my top set though. So pause deadlift, um, it's good for multiple things. First one is being stronger out of the bottom. So a lot of sumo pullers actually really like pause deadlift because sumo, it's one of those where you need to be really patient and then it comes off. So it builds strength at the bottom where it allows you to like trust in your body and have the strength to have that patience where it's not like you see people just go, mm, oh, fuck it, and they give up. Um, for me, it's actually to train being patient off the floor in the conventional so I don't yank it. So practicing like slowly moving the bar in a good place and then being able to explode after. So right now I'm doing baby steps where it's like zero, 10, 20, 30, all the way up to 100. And pretty soon I'll go to like zero, 10, 20, 30, zero, 10, 20, 30. So some of the best pullers like conventional, they might not even look like they're pulling the slack out, but they are. And you can always tell by this. So if two people can look like they're yanking, but if one of them, you hear this, like you hear the bar hit the weights, they're yanking because there's no slack pulled out. If you hear the deadlift like this, and then it comes off and there's no like click, that means they're pulling the slack out. So there are people that pull fast, but they're not yanking because they're pulling the slack out first and then exploding. So that's what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to a point where you don't hear the, like that. And then eventually I could go zero to 100, but doing it right. I think two out of the four, I didn't hear the click. So even though I move slow, you can still hear the click on some of them, which means I'm going slow and then I'm initiating the pull right before all the slack is pulled out. But I think two of them were silent, which is good. So something I'm just gonna have to continuously work on. And I think I got a little bit fat. My belt feels really tight. <laughs> so I gotta be careful with my weight too. So I've been hovering between 184, 186. I do wanna bring it back down, but during the holidays, it's kind of tough. Lots of people coming into town, birthdays, all that. So right now, if I could just maintain 185, that's not bad, because I'll compete on 181s next year. Then me uh, cutting three, four pounds over many months shouldn't affect my strength. So I just don't want to get up to like upwards of like 190, you know? That's when it's like trouble zone. It actually looks pretty good. So the cue, like if I were to judge, if I were to coach this athlete up and he's not me, one of the cues I'm looking for is I want to see the bar bend before the weights leave the ground. So you'll see bar bending right there, slow pull. So that first rep is really good, really good. So they actually all look not bad. When I was pulling, I could hear the click and I'm like, fuck. And it's good I'm finding the hip position where I don't like, uh, get tension in the hips and then my hips still shoot up. It's like right where it needs to be. So bar bends, see that? Like right, right where I, the bar bends and then the weights haven't left the floor yet. And as soon as I initiate the pull, it's exactly where my hips are. Well, I guess it shoots up an inch, slow motion. But not bad though, not bad at all.
So I'll, be probably, I'll probably be spending a couple months like not increasing too much weight, just really getting that down. And once I get that down, I can increase weight. But it's also my secondary deadlift day, so I'm not supposed to be going heavy. Anyways, RDLs at seven, okay. Okay, since I'm slowly integrating them into my program, I don't want to make the big mistake I've done before, which is increase weight too fast. So I'm slowly bumping it up. I think last week I did 245. And even though 405 moved pretty good, just to make sure I'm well rested for my main deadlift day, I'll probably stick to 275 even though my heart wants to do 315. But I'm learning. I might be an old dog in the game, but it's never too late to learn and fix things. I did one extra rep because I'm always miscounting. Let's see. I don't count the first one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I'm so glad I did that extra rep. See, I counted eight, but when I was doing it, I counted nine. Good. Felt good, yeah. I could really like, I think like, um, I don't know if I talked about this in the last video, but like, I think what you're trying to do with powerlifting, and it's funny that I figured this out after 10 years, because I think people with proper coaching and good athletes in this day and age, I think you figured out in the first year. Like after you get that initial like, oh, I wanna hit a crazy PR out of your system, then you're like, oh wait. And then you crash and burn, you realize that's not the way to power lift. So the metaphor that I use now is, you know when you're like, when you're driving stick, probably none of you, none of you fucking kids drive stick anymore, but when you pop it in and you, you let the clutch up and then you can feel it catch and then you're giving it gas, you don't just like, drop the clutch and hit the gas because your car will go, 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 go. you actually want to ride the clutch and then like if you're drifting or whatever like that's where you want to be so nowadays in almost everyone's program they're trying to hit that rp67 and prolong 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 how much weight can i increase keeping that rp67 as soon as it hits 8d load 67 six, so i'm trying to do that now whereas before in my era of powerlifting it's like rpe 10 and then fucking you're fucked. Fucking blood coming out of your fucking eyes and shit. Fucking ripped calluses. Oh, I'm a fucking power lifter. And you only hit one PR a week. I mean, a month, a year. Now motherfuckers are like putting 100 pounds on their total in like a year. You know? So I'm trying to find that. But then not burn the engine down and just, just, just for like, push it. So that was good. That was like right there. Right where it needs to be. That was a good set actually, really, really good. Done. See this little nifty setup? It's pretty cool, huh? This doubles as a cable row. What the fuck? Oh shit, fucked up. I didn't even connect it the right way. Idiot. I was like, damn, the fucking deadlifts take that much out of me? Okay. 
There we go. Okay. All right. You see this little nifty setup? It's pretty cool. There we go. One thing I did learn from JP, from running stud muffins with them, is now I do accessories like a bodybuilder. So before I just go through the motions, but now I focus on the eccentric too. And one of the key points that I learned from both Mike Ezertel and JP is whatever movement you're doing on the eccentric, actually mimic doing that, that uh, version backwards. So if you're doing tricep extension on the eccentric, pretend like you're doing a hammer curl, but obviously you're not curling, right? but you're just controlling the hammer curl and you'll feel like the burn almost both ways. So here I pull, I squeeze the lats deep and then I almost like push out and I feel a good stretch and then engage again. So I'm trying to combine all the things I learned throughout fitness from friends, collaborations, videos, the last 10 years and just try to accumulate so I could become a barbell sensei. Oh, that's a cool IG name actually. I wonder if there is one, Barbell Sensei. that burn. Oh shit. This one I'm doing a bonus round on my left side. So I went lighter in weight. I wanted to test the theory. Because one thing I just realized when I'm doing these, uh, I don't think I've been stretching my left side out as much as my right. So I'm thinking maybe that's the reason for my left shoulder pain that I'm not, because even when you're training, you're actually training mobility. Like if, obviously if you're doing curls like this, you're not training mobility. Um, you're actually gonna get tighter and tighter over time. But if you're doing full range of motion, when you're doing squats, like high bar, like when you train like a true bodybuilder and it's like full ROM, your mobility and your strength within mobility actually increases. And I, I've been wondering, like when I had my shoulder injury, I would baby it like a motherfucker. I'm doing everything like this. I don't want to have too much range of motion. I don't want to be like overextended. But now that it's in a manageable place, I've kept that bad habit. So I'm thinking, am I not fully recovering because of that? So I'm gonna test the theory, getting like that really good stretch with a little bit lighter weight and see how I feel tomorrow. And a lot of this stuff is just trial and error. So I'm doing lighter weight and just trying to like 
maybe this will really help, you know, like relieve that shoulder pressure. I get to use new dumbbells today. Just ordered these bad boys, some 40s. Because that's what I was missing. I had like 5, 10, 20. And originally I had this set and it looks nice and it came with this. I had to get 27.5s because during the pandemic, 30s were out. So they're like, would you rather have 27.5s or 32.5s? And I was like, fuck. I was like, I guess 27.5 because I always do extra reps. But if I'm doing something that's 32.5 and I can't do it, I'm just, I don't hit four reps on something. So I was like, I'd rather do extra reps. And then as the program started to get sophisticated, I was like, I need more in between weights. I thought I could manage between 50 and 100, but that is a big jump. You know, it's like either you do this for like 15 or you do this for five. I'm like, what if I need to hit a rep range of eight or 10? So I got 75s. Then I started realizing, originally I'm a big like OCD aesthetics guy. So I wanted to get the whole thing the same set. But then I started realizing how cheap these motherfuckers are. Like this is like almost a dollar a pound, I think on Amazon. So I just started filling in the gap. So I have, now I got the 15s, the 20s and the 30s. And I just got the 40s. Cause I realized between 30 and 50 is a big jump too. Like I'll do like three sets of 15 on curls. And then I do 50s and it's like, like four. I'm like, well, fuck. How do I train that middle range? That's so important for power So I have to get another set. And this was pretty cheap. It was like under a hundred bucks. Whereas this might've been fucking like a hundred bucks, you know? So happy I get to use these guys. able to do a normal ass rep range versus doing fucking a thousand of these or just break my back trying to do four of those. Now I got side lateral raise. Moving on to cables, cause um, the last block, I focused a lot on dumbbells. So I, I like that I got my shoulder raise strength up. But in my opinion, I actually think cable raises build the muscle more. So that's kind of like the give or take, I think, when it comes to strength and hypertrophy training. You build up the strength, and that's awesome because then now like in a real life movement, Jiu Jitsu is strong, man, you feel strong, but then you don't necessarily build the most muscle. What I like about cables is it's constant tension. So even down here, there's tension. Whereas dumbbells, the, te the most tension is up here and you can technically, I could probably put on 50 pounds and do this a hundred times, it's nothing. And so you can go heavy, but you won't build muscle. Whereas cable, you'll build muscle, but then you won't really feel it apply like when you're like in Jiu Jitsu or Strongman. So now I did like six months of just dumbbells. Now I'll probably do like six months of just lateral raises where I try to build, the, build my shoulder up muscle-wise. And I'm also balancing the strength with shoulder presses on another day. So I think I'll get like the best of both worlds. So watch, you see this cable? Even down here where it's technically negative range of motion now, I still have tension. I can still technically get a shoulder workout here. Whereas with the dumbbell, if I held a dumbbell here, it's just gonna swing it this way. So I'm not gonna train this side. So that's why cables are cool because the minute I unrack, I have tension in the mid delt, which is what I'm trying to hit. So this whole range of motion, I have tension.
So it's such a good muscle builder. Cause starting here, you have tension, 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 tension. Woo! That pump though. All right, hope you've been liking all these like hang and train style series. Just trying to end the year strong. My main goal for the end of this year is really just to set myself up like alley-oop a bunch so we can hit it fucking hard next year. Cause next year we got big goals. We have a big series uh, that we're trying to plan so stay tuned for that announcement of what that series is going to be about. So, um, but next year we're, we're, we're looking to find the best type of content that you guys like. So let us know if you like the more fast paced uh, cinematic style of video. Because some people I know they like listen and it's almost like a pre-workout while they're training. Or you like this hang and train and it feels like we're like training together. Let us know and we'll do more content like that. But stay tuned for the next video. And I believe that is going to be the last training video of 2023. Had an awesome time this whole year and I can't wait to announce what's going to happen next year in the next video. Peace.